Going back to 1912, America was in the middle of the progressive era, dominated by the presidency of Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, okay. We're hearing from that table. This is a room of shy people. They don't applaud, they don't kiss. What can I say? The United States was increasingly defined by industrialization, immigration, urbanization, and a rise in poverty. John Dewey, Jane Addams, and other progressives had dreams. They had big dreams, and they looked to education to overcome poverty and level the playing field. Dewey defined a philosophy of education that focused on child-centered learning instead of rote memorization and recitation. He and his colleagues, including our founder, believed that children educated in this manner would become adults who would contribute to a democratic society and they would be committed to the public good. Really, when you think about it, the public good, how often do you even hear, how often do we even hear those terms anymore? Those values, beliefs, and aspirations have animated Bank Street's work for decades and will continue to do so for years to come. When Lucy Sprague Mitchell arrived in New York, she found a political war between reformers and educators over a new model for public schools. Does this sound re remotely familiar to you? At that time, New York's progressive mayor, John Puro Mitchell, not related to Lucy, successfully marginalized the Board of Education and with the support of a broad coalition of business leaders and reform groups, introduced the Gary Plan. And I promise I'll be brief, but this school reform effort was named after the city in Indiana where it was launched by a superintendent of schools who was a follower of Dewey, and based on a work, study, play model with a longer school day, a stress on hands-on learning and training in the technologies of the moment, and moving groups of students around a building according to a set schedule to achieve efficiencies, the Gary Plan was in fact innovative. In the end, however, it failed, and it was brought down by a lack of trust between teachers, school leaders, and parents. Again, doesn't this sound only too familiar? Lucy Mitchell and her colleagues joined this debate. They were determined to understand how children learn and to create the best school environments. They did it by bringing together a lab school, a research model based on observation of children and documentation of their work, and later a new way of training teachers and emphasizing a foundation in child development and deep experience working with children. Those ideas became the Bank Street we know today. And now it's 2012, and we face today's problems of public education, global competitiveness, assessing teachers and improving preparation, the, the achievement gap, using new technologies for better learning outcomes, improving high school graduation rates and college readiness, and the pernicious impacts of poverty and inequity. Some think we have found the solutions. Others think we are simply putting new labels or new dresses on the same ineffective remedies that we've already tried. And I think everyone in this room knows, as a nation, we are still searching. The, the journey is not over. So this brings me back to Bank Street and what I hope we will always be. A place that knows there aren't easy solutions. A place defined by a relentless passion for the hard work of teaching and leading schools. A place that understands what works for kids in schools, thus, investing in early childhood education and quality child care so that every child gets the right early start. Creating working environments for teachers that reflect a deep respect for them as valued professionals, including better pay and more professional development opportunities. Developing school leadership, thank you. Developing school leadership programs so that more principals are prepared to create 
high performing communities where learning and not just testing occur. So even those who don't share our values in approach have called Bank Street the gold standard for teaching. As the nation's schools and education practices and policies have continued to be politicized, Bank Street's mission and commitment to progressive values has not faded. In fact, we are just as steady as a rock. You can count on us because while there are things about Bank Street that change, the embrace of those fundamental values doesn't waver. Living up to that reputation will be a challenge in the 21st century, but I hope you agree that it is a challenge we must meet, and with your continued help, I know we will do that. Thank you.